Welcome everyone to 6.4 General Logarithmic and Exponential Functions. In this section, we have a little bit of a review of stuff that you probably saw back in your algebra or trig days. We're going to review some properties of general exponentials and logarithmics, and then we're going to move into the new stuff. We're going to do the calculus of these new functions that we have. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we have here is a definition, and it's what we're going to use to define this a to the x. So a to the x in our case is going to be actually e to the x times the natural log of a. All right, so I have a few side notes for you. Why would we go about you know, this crazy definition uh, for a to the x? So in general, when we have something like a squared, for instance, or a to really any integer power, this is well defined. Right? Or even if you have a to a rational power, like 3 halves, Right? This is also well defined, right? Because we know the one half power is the same thing as like the square root. So this would be the square root of a times a times a. But now when you have an irrational, right? When you take a and you raise it to like something like pi, for instance, the question is, what does this mean? How do I calculate this thing out? And that's why we need this crazy definition. Another quick side note that I have, so side note two, I suppose is that this definition makes sense. So if you were to write this e to the x times the natural log of a, we know one of the properties of natural logs is that you can use the power rule, right? And this is the same thing as e to the natural log of a to the x. And then e and natural log are inverses, so they cancel. OK, now even with this crazy definition, uh, all of the general laws of exponentials so that's what this theorem is about right here. All the general laws of exponentials follow uh, from this together with the laws of e to the x. So because they work for e to the x, they're going to work for these. So that is, first of all, if you add two powers together, well, you could instead multiply the bases. So a to the x times a to the y. Uh, when you subtract, that's the same thing as dividing the bases. right? We've seen this before. We have some, some something like a power rule. So this would be a to the r times x. And then you can distribute uh, exponentials across multiplication. So something like a to the x times b to the x. OK, now let's get into some calculus. So if we take the derivative of a to the x, the claim is that we should get a to the x times the natural log of a. We'll see why this is true here in a second. Assuming this is true, we can go backwards, right? And we could take the integral. And this would be a to the x divided by the natural log of a plus a constant of integration. And again. Uh, this kind of assumes that a is not equal to 1. So let's go ahead and prove, at least part a here, uh, why this would be the case. So we need to use our definition. So our definition states that a to the x is the same thing as e to the x times natural log of a. And now we want to take the derivative of this thing. Well, we've already learned how to take the derivative of e to the x. Right? So we know that the derivative of e is itself. So we have e to the x times the natural log of a, but then we have the chain rule. And the chain rule says we need to multiply by, right? Uh, well, this is a uh, linear term, so it's just going to be the natural log of a. So if we can rewrite this, right, we know that e to the x times natural log of a is the same thing as a to the x times natural log of a. And that's what we wanted to show here. So that's the proof. Um, and right, we can go backwards. We could take the definite integral. Uh, just using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can see that this is true, right? Because when you take the derivative of the antiderivative, you should get back to where you started. So let's try applying this. And I'm going to do this one actually in a couple different ways. So the first thing, uh, right, I'm trying to take the integral of 4 to the negative x dx. And one way we could go about this uh, is by rewriting this. So I'm going to note that 4 to the negative x is the same thing as 4 to the negative 1 raised to the x. So this is one of those properties of exponentials. And this is the same thing as 1 fourth raised to the x power. So when I'm trying to integrate this thing, uh, this is the same thing as integrating 1 fourth raised to the x power dx. So now I can very clearly see what my a is, right? My a is 1 fourth, and I just apply the rule. So this becomes 1 fourth to the x divided by the natural log of 1 fourth, and of course, plus my constant of integration. Now, there's an alternate way that we can do this, right? 
So I'm going to go ahead and write down here alternate. And this is if we didn't want to use this trick. Uh, and we just wanted to straight up integrate 4 to the negative x dx. And this one, it requires a little guessing and checking. Or if you'd like, you can use kind of a u substitution. Uh, but you can see that this is going to be 4 to the negative x divided by the natural log of just positive 4, right? Because the base is positive 4. And then negative 1 uh, is going to be this uh, because of the chain rule. And so we can go ahead and check, right? Is this thing the same as the other answer back here? So that's the big question. These look kind of different. So we can note, we can apply this negative 1 to the denominator, right? Because multiplying by negative 1 and dividing by negative 1 is the same thing. And we know one of the powers, the power rule properties, right, is that you can take that negative 1 and you can apply it uh, to the power of this 4. And so the claim is the denominators are actually the same. And the numerators are now actually the same. So, yes, either way you get the exact same answer. All right, now the power rule. The power rule is something we learned back in Calc 1. So it just says that the derivative of x to the n is nx to the n minus 1. And I bring this up here now because before today, you couldn't technically prove this for any real number. You could do it for the integers. And you started usually doing it with the uh, positive integers. Then you went to the negative integers, things like this. And then you could actually do it for rational numbers. Uh, once you got the chain rule, you could prove this. But this is the first time you can prove it for any real number. So that's why I bring this up here now, just because this is the first time we can actually prove that this works all the time. OK, now I need to tell you about a definition of what it means to have a logarithmic function uh, with base a. So this is now a general log. Uh, we're going to denote this by log base a. And this is going to be defined by, we have log base a of x is going to be equal to a value y if and only if a to the y is equal to x. So this is kind of similar to what we had before when we were defining the natural log uh, with the exponential, right? There's this kind of if and only if statement. Now, if you'd like to change bases, you can do log base a of x is equal to, and we'd like to change back to the natural log. So the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a. So this is a great way to change uh, back and forth between bases. And in particular, right, your calculator has the natural log. It probably doesn't have log base 2. Some of the newer ones do, but yeah. OK, let's try to evaluate out this log problem here. I'm going to do it in two different ways. I'm going to do the first way is going to be if I have a calculator and I'm allowed to use it. So I can use this change of base formula. And then I can plug this into my calculator. So I have this nice natural log button down here. So it's going to be the natural log of 256 divided by the natural log of 8. And when I do that, I get 2.66 repeating. Now let's see how to do this if it came up on a quiz or an exam or something where I didn't get to use my calculator. So the way that we can do this without using a calculator uh, is by using kind of this equivalent statement up here. So log base a of x equals y is the same thing as a to the y equals x. So let's try applying this to solve, uh, to figure out what this log is. Sorry, let me use green here. So log base 8 of 256, we're going to call this y to try to set it up to be the same kind of look and feel as up here. And I want to know what y is. So we can rewrite this as 8 to the y is equal to 256. And so we can, re we can rewrite this actually has powers of 2. So I noticed, you know, 256, this is kind of like a number of gigs in a hard drive or something like this. This is going to be some power of 2. So it's actually 2 to the 8th power. And we can verify this on our calculator really quick. 2 to the 8th equals 256. Perfect. And of course, 8 is 2 cubed. So now one of our properties of exponentials says we can rewrite this as 2 to the 3 times y is 2 to the 8th. 
And now the last thing is, well, if you want these to be the same number, well, their exponents should be the same, right? That's the same thing as saying that exponentials are one to one. So 3y equals 8, and solving for that, we can get y equals 8 thirds. Now we should double check, right? Does 8 thirds equal this 2.66 and change? Yes. All right, so now I'm confident, you know, we can solve this with calculator without any of the above. Another thing that this change of base formula is really useful for is that we can actually take the derivative of any logarithmic, any log base, any a. So, but we need to use this change of base formula. So I'm gonna change it into the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a. And now, right, the natural log of a is just a constant. So it's along for the ride. And the natural log of x, well, it has a derivative of one over x. So my final answer should just be uh, this, one over x times the natural log of a. So now I have a nice theorem or a nice formula to take the derivative of any base a. All right, and that's probably a good place to take a break. Let's stretch our legs really quick, and then when we come back in 6.4, we'll finish up this section with a few more examples. I'll see you then.